fireless steam locomotive might look much like its conventional cousin, but it works in a very different way. Instead of a boiler, it carries a large reservoir, known as a steam accumulator, charged with superheated water under pressure from a stationary boiler. Once charged, the locomotive operates just like a traditional steam engine, using the high pressure steam above the water. As that steam is used and the pressure drops, the superheated water boils, producing more steam. This continues until the pressure falls to a minimum useful level or the water supply is exhausted, at which point the locomotive must return for a recharge. This design had a clear advantage for industrial sites. Any factory with a stationary boiler could charge a fireless locomotive for internal shunting. With no fire on board, there was no risk of sparks, making them ideal for handling flammable materials. They also produced no exhaust gases other than steam, meaning they could work inside buildings without endangering workers with smoke or fumes. Some, like the 060 locomotives delivered to the Ministry of Munitions, even had rail washing gear on their leading and trailing wheels. This helped reduce the risk of sparks further, especially when negotiating the sharp curves often found in munitions factories. They were also extremely economical to run when a good supply of steam was available. The first British manufacturer to produce fireless locomotives was Andrew Barclay Sons and Company of Kilmarnock, Scotland. Their first example was built in 1912, a narrow-gauge engine later converted to a conventional steam tank design. The first in-service fireless locomotive, Works No. 1307, was delivered in November 1913 to the Admiralty at Biedenham in Portsmouth. The first standard-gauge example followed in February 1916, Works No. 1434, part of a batch of six for the Ministry of Munitions. Further engines soon followed for use at Vickers National Filling Factories and at Gretna, with several of these surviving into preservation. Not all were military machines. In July 1917, two were delivered to British dyers in Huddersfield, the first non-military customers for the design. While fireless locomotives are not particularly well suited to heritage railway operation, a few have appeared in preservation. In the 1990s, Andrew Barclay Works No. 1989, Lord Ashfield ran at the Museum of Science and Industry in Manchester, while Works No. 2243 Laporte worked at the Buckinghamshire Railway Centre. More recently, Works number 1952 has operated at the Doon Valley Railway since its overhaul in 2015. Though often overlooked in the history of British railways, fireless locomotives played a vital role in some of the most hazardous and specialised industrial environments of the 20th century. If you've enjoyed this look at the history of fireless steam locomotives, please remember to like this video, share it with fellow railway enthusiasts, and subscribe to the channel for more fascinating stories from the world of railways.